Hey guys, D Mike here. Who's ready to do some Casa Bonita style cliff diving? Geronimo! Alright, so that wasn't quite as exciting as I would have liked it to be, but it is what it is. So last time, we were able to go into the Yarna Desert. We were able to get the Angler Key, collect some goodies, and now we're able to make our way into the Angler Key. This is Dungeon 4. Pretty fun one. I like it. It opens up the game a lot once you... Oh, Angler's Tunnel. Excuse me. This dungeon, upon its completion, opens up the game a lot. So I, I like that a lot. The issue that I have with this dungeon isn't so much the layout or anything like that. It's just that the aesthetics of this one are a little different. They changed this one up quite a bit. The... The, the music of this one is kind of a combo of the remastered HD and also kind of some old 8-bit style fusion. I don't hate it, but I also don't necessarily love it, so I guess I'm kind of conflicted on how I feel. It's not bad, I mean... Any, any music in this game, for the most part, is probably going to be pretty good. But, I don't know. In general, I just don't like it as much as the others. And it kind of has a little bit of a horn or like a trombone swell in it as you get playing. And it kind of reminds me of Groose's theme from Skyward Sword. Yeah, like right there, if you, if you heard that. It's just weird having the typical do 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 with the wah, 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 wah. I don't I feel like the contrast is just kind of weird and I don't I don't love it. I like what they've done with the updated music. Like the updated music to me is really cool. It gives you kind of a I don't know, kind of just like a water world type of theme. Like, you know, it, it makes you think of being somewhere aquatic, which is nice. With like the harp and the horns and stuff, that's nice. But the... The throw-in of the... Of the normal dungeon music kind of sours it for me a little bit. Maybe I'm just being a little critical, who knows. But anyway, we got the map now. Let's take a peek at it. Doesn't really look like anything special. I guess it's maybe a trident. That's kind of what they're going for, a little bit of a Poseidon-y look. This dungeon can be a little tricky. And I might, hopefully I don't mess it up, but there are parts in this dungeon which are a little obtuse, a little kind of strange, and I'm almost out of bombs, so I'm glad I have this one. Need more. But, like I was saying, this dungeon in particular is... You know, it's kind of your middle-of-the-road dungeon. It's not too hard. But what I like about it is that it opens up a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. You're able to do a ton more once this dungeon is completed. It really... Gives you the ability to explore. Rude, interrupting me. And I'm glad I got that bomb because I didn't have ability to break this cracked rock here. Oh, and we're drowning. That's one thing that Nintendo doesn't really seem to have any issues with. From my memory is showing their very cute, cartoony, fun characters dying in horrific ways. It makes me think back to when I was a kid and I'd play Mario 64. That was one of my favorite games. Was, is. You know, it's a great game. And I I was always afraid of like the, the water levels. You know, like your Dire Dire Docks, your Jolly Roger Bay, all of those. They were kind of scary for me as a kid. I was just learning how to swim. I was just, you know, getting to that point of getting comfortable in the water. 
in that I'm playing this game where you can see Mario visibly panicking when he is about to die from oxygen deprivation. So... Oh, but I can't... Is that a bug? Oh, it was a... that's another problem with this game, too, is the depth perception that I have. I don't have bad depth perception in general. Subtle flex. But being able to see where the secondary items are above you, I think a lot of that has to do with the view being isometric. And because it's in a 3D space now, it's not in a 2D space anymore. It's not quite so clear where those things are. So it does make it a little tricky. Ugh. I was trying to avoid that. But anyway. This dungeon in general, I think, is really fun. It's not my favorite one. Actually, I think my favorite dungeon might be the one after this. Which is not too dissimilar. But in general. This one. You know, it it is it is for all intents and purposes, the Link's Awakening Water Dungeon. However, it doesn't have a... It doesn't feel threatening to me. Well, bye-bye key. Hope we didn't need that. I know for a lot of people, the Water Dungeons in Zelda can be a bit of a deal breaker. That's the point when you play the game and you're kind of turned off from progressing further because you feel like you can't really get a grip on it. Obviously the prototypical one that everybody mentions is the Water Temple of Ocarina of Time. Oh, I forgot the week. <laughs> That's deep water. Can't get that one yet. If only we had a certain item to help us get there. Maybe we'll find one. But yeah, this, this dungeon is a good one to, to get your feet wet. How about that? To dip your toes in the pool. Whatever sort of maritime analogy you'd like to, to make for yourself. So the darker blue water in this dungeon, as we've seen a couple of times of me making mistakes, is not habitable for Link right now. Any attempt to move into that area will cause him to turn his cute little soul into a shrouded watery death, which is very horrifying. But Nintendo is like, you know what? This is a game for kids. Let's have their fun, favorite little Link character die horrifically, a watery grave. That'll do it for him, right? So coming up here, this is something we saw earlier. I believe it was on the way to Richard's Villa. This is a mimic chest. I mean, it's not a mimic chest in the same sense of like Final Fantasy. It's not going to try to attack you. I mean, technically it does, I guess. But it's a fake chest. So this is a room that was precipitated by the the owl's beak. So you have to step on the tiles in a right order in order to get this room to give you the prize. So that's not the right one. This is more like trial and error. I don't have this stuff memorized. Like I used to when I would play this game for Let's Playing back in the day. Okay, so that's going to be a little tricky actually because it appears as though the far tile is the one that it wants us to go to and we can't access that yet. So, we'll have to come back. I'm sure those of you who are paying attention can see that the item that we're missing is very integral to our ability to progress here. Shocking, I know. So without that said item, which if you haven't figured it out by now, is a useful tool if you like to go kuba diving. So that's a little hint for you. I don't want to spoil it. Not trying to get too wild. I want to see if I can make this jump. I doubt it. I, I feel like the... Pegasus boots don't do very well. Oh. oh, I guess I can make that jump, but it's from the wrong side, so it doesn't matter. I got greedy. That was pretty cool, though, right? So we've got another key that we picked up before. And a mini boss. 
So I don't know this one's name. I'm gonna look it up if I can find it. This guy is a, kind of looks like a Tektite, like a big one. Water spider, if you've ever seen those little pond skitters. Maybe if you're like in a creek or something, or a crick, depending upon where you're from. So this is not a very exciting fight. He just kind of, it, sorry. It sort of just slams into the wall, makes very failed, weak attempts to turn around and come at us. I don't know. There's probably ways to be better at this, but I'm not I'm not MLG Pro anymore, so trying to do a speedrun of this boss battle is not going to happen, but in general, this one's pretty simple. You just keep slapping him on his behind. Showed him who's the boss. Top and bottom, baby. So, this actually takes a lot more hits than I thought it was going to. I'd like to get this fight over with sometime this year. That's one of the things that this game, unfortunately, didn't quite do as well as I would have liked it to. They didn't reimagine a lot of the stuff that the original... Didn't reimagine everything that the original kind of held back on. And one of the things that I wish they would have done is throwing a little more diversity in the mini bosses. I feel like this one is just kind of uninspired. I mean, that's the first time you see him, but we won't see him. We'll see him again, not for a little while. But anyway, here it is, guys. Hold your breaths. This is very exciting as I get shot by fireballs. Excuse you. I'm trying to go treasure hunting. Woo! Guys, we did it. We got the flippers. Now, mind you, these are Link's Awakening flippers. These are not... These are not Oracle of Ages flippers. The mermaid suit, if you've played that game, which a lot of people did not like that dungeon. The Jabu Jabu variety. Because of the game completely altering the mechanics. So here's, an, here's the, I guess, introduction to the tile puzzle. This is supposed to give you kind of a, a look into how you do it. It's pretty easy. The other one, obviously, is a little tougher. And... Excuse you. And by being tougher, you get a better reward. So if we remember, one of the things we couldn't do before, prior to getting those flippers, we needed to get that key that kind of sunk into the end of that little moat. So now we can come get it. Everybody loves a little hidden treasure. I remember hearing a story of a guy a long time ago. This is anecdotal, so I don't know if this is true. This might just be a wise tale, but you take it for what it's worth. And there was a guy who I guess was really well known for treasure hunting. He loved to go around and use all kinds of methods to find some hidden ancient artifacts. However you want to frame it. But I remember one of the things that he was advised to try that apparently he had never done before is they asked him if he would like to try to use a metal detector i'm sure you've all seen those before it's got it's the long pole with a flat plate on the top of, or on the bottom of it and you wave it over metal objects and then if it has resonance then it'll pick it up so pretty cool and i guess he was a really big fan of that and he garnered a lot of attention for what he was doing at the time he was like getting pretty famous for it in his like local community. And they sent him on some like quest for some like something important. I don't know, like somebody had missed something like maybe like a missed engagement ring or something like that. And he was trying to comb the area that he was in and he was working really hard to find it. And he had like media following him and friends and family and it was blowing up everywhere. And then it turns out that he couldn't find what he was looking for. Everything that he was in the area was beeping with his metal detector and then it turns out that part of the reason why he was struggling is because his that day or that time that he was working with his metal detector he decided to wear steel toed boots and they kept picking him up so he was not able to to do what he needed to do 
which is kind of funny. Kind of sad, but also kind of funny. So jump on this thwomp, jump up here. That's a little bit of a tricky platforming puzzle. Get yourselves the boss key. We're actually almost done. This dungeon isn't really too long. We'll peep the map real quick here in a second, so you can see what I mean. Not really too tough. We'll have to go back and make a quick trip to the entrance to pick up that one chest. But there's actually a really neat way that you can do that. Now that we have... Well, no, actually, we we can't do that yet. We don't have... We can do that after this dungeon. I got excited. I'll explain that in Dungeon 5, what we can do. So we'll still have to rely on on teleporters and, and whatnot for now. So this dungeon not being very long, it makes me just think of how this game in general was built in a way... I, I mean, I keep saying this, but it was built in a way to be very introductory for, for new Zelda fans. And I like that. I think that's pretty cool to not make things too overtly difficult where at the same time, like, you still want to get people introduced to your franchise. Because prior to this game, the only other entry up until, I want to say Ocarina of Time, was Link to the Past. And Ocarina of Time didn't come out for some years after this one. So this one being a very good precursor to all of that. I mean, if you've played... Link to the Past. It's not necessarily a hard game, but it is very involved. And I can imagine being a new player and being overwhelmed playing that. I'll actually come back into the dungeon to pick up that last thing. Because I don't want... I can't... I can't do the fun thing that I said that I was going to do, so I, I gave you guys a nice tease and... I'm sorry, everybody. But anyway, this is our first and only boss that is fought underwater. Surprisingly, this large fish, the anglerfish of the angler tunnel, is our boss. So not a terribly hard boss. Once again, I say that, and I'm probably going to be the one to, to bite it. So one of the things that's a little different about this version of the, of the anglerfish is the falling debris from the ceiling. I don't believe that was in the original. But they summon their underlings. A kind of a fun fact about anglerfish that I learned is that most anglerfish in maturity, uh, when the males and females mature, I believe this is correct, so don't quote me on this, but I have heard before that the males, in order to procreate with the females, they essentially attach themselves to the outside of the female's body, and then she just kind of used them as a floating pair of testicles, I guess, and like she can just make babies whenever she wants. So they're just kind of chilling on the outside of the female's body. That's kind of weird. That's a kind of a weird fun fact, but I remember reading that somewhere. So I hope that's accurate. Animals are weird. Evolution is weird. Fish are weird. But anyway, that wasn't too bad, right? We took care of that one pretty easily. Yeah. Had a good time. Once again killing more wildlife as Link has been tasked with doing on this incredibly toxic island but doing so gets my man a heart Hey, bye, bye. It sure does. And now that we've got those flippers, guys, we can explore so many places. There's so much more we can do and will do. But first, before I call it quits, like I said, I wanted to go back into the dungeon. I don't have the way to, to do a quick warp in and out of the dungeon yet. You can do saving quits if you want to, but uh, no. I'm not a save and quitter. So let's take a look at our map here. If you go two rooms north from where we are here, it puts you into that area where we couldn't quite get the one chest because of it being submerged or over there. We couldn't swim to it yet. 
So we will do that. Get rid of this pea hat. Or hopefully, he can am scray. There's a fairy in that pot. Thanks, game. This is pretty useful. We're getting very close to the necessary amount of dollary dues that we need to pick up a special item. An item that will consequently make the fifth dungeon a lot easier. So I'm very happy about that. Fifth dungeon is my favorite. Fifth dungeon has my favorite boss mechanic. It has my favorite item. But we're a ways out before we get to there. So hopefully you guys had fun. Splish splash. Taking a bath. I enjoyed hanging out with you. I'll see you guys next time. I've been D-Mike. See ya.